What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? I'm terrible. Thanks for asking. This week, we have the biggest piece of shit I have ever put together on this channel. And no, it's not like last week where I say it is, and then come around at the end and say, eh, it's not that bad. This thing is pure garbage. It was, of course, easy to put together. I mean, come on, we're professionals at this by now. But with this, it was just the end product. It could have been something a little fun, you know? Push a button, it rolls a six-sided die. But man, just wait. You'll see. I don't want to spoil it for you. Plus, I need the watch time. It's times like this I wish I recorded audio when making this stuff. It would have probably been very entertaining at the end. So as always, let's make sure all the parts are here. And with that, let's get to making shit. So the triodes. Yeah, 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 it's not 1947, blah, blah, blah. So the transistors. There's four of them. What do they do? Who cares, right? Instructions sure don't. Just put them in, monkey. From following the traces, it seems like they're being used as relays for the LEDs. Four diodes, seven LEDs. Kind of makes sense. They're most likely being controlled by the IC chip. More on that later. So I don't think I've mentioned this little nifty PCB holder. Only $23.96. What a bargain. It's kind of hefty for its size, and the magnets are pretty strong. I was kind of looking for something different from helping hands, basically something to just make the board not skate around the bench while soldering, and this kind of delivers. It's a little pricey and small for what it is, but I like it, especially for the digital microscope. It gets three shits. Remember the shit scale? Well, it's back, baby, and better than ever. So here the problems start already. With these cheap ass boards, I had a problem getting the solder to take on some of the pads. I'm actually going to chalk this up to the flux pen also. It's just not the same as the gel flux. But it's probably a combination of both. Well, that might burnt up tips. But come on, we all know it's the board, not my skills. The sun was in my eyes anyway. Going in next to the resistors. You know what? We've all seen me solder these things in over and over again while performing subpar voiceover work with poor explanations. So for this video, and basically because I'm trying to teach myself how these components work together anyway, I'm going to try something a little different. Since this thing has no diagram or explanation on what it does, I'm going to feed the components in a simple description of what this thing is supposed to do into ChatGTP and see what it comes up with. And then I'll try to break it down for us amateurs. I say what it's supposed to do because, well, you could probably guess. So the resistors. The 10K resistors provide base current limiting for the transistors, ensuring that they switch correctly. Okay, got it. The 470 ohms limit the current to the LEDs, or bye bye LEDs, see in hell. And the 1K is used for additional current control for the LEDs. A little lost on that one, but I think I kinda got it. How about you? The other three resistors are for the 555 timer. Now, going back to the transistors and the chat DGP explanation. According to the chat, they are being used as switches. They're taking the small output current from the CD4017 chip and powering or controlling the resistor. So current from the CD4017 goes to the base pin, usually the middle one of the three, and then it opens a pathway between the emitter and the collector, the left and right pins, to power the LEDs. All right, I understand that. It's like how in your house you have a 24 volt thermostat that controls your HVAC, which is of course high voltage. In that case, it uses a mechanical relay. That's that click sound you might hear from time to time when it turns on. In this case, it's not mechanical, it's electronic. No click. Plus, it could do it much faster than a mechanical. We're talking nanoseconds. And this is my theory that everything in electric is just a switch, whether it be high or low voltage. Don't believe me? Think about it. Really a transistor? Switch. Diode, IC chip, or even a microprocessor? Switches. Transformer. Might have me on that. Ah, wait a minute. It's switching voltage. Wordplay? Sure. But still. Caps? Okay, you got me on that. But they're storing electrical power anyway. Like a battery. I mean, really. Think about it. Even a TV, for instance. What's the microprocessor doing? It's just switching pixels on and off in a specific pattern to create an image, right? Everything is a switch. I'll fight you, bro. Ah, but let's make shit guy, you say. What about light bulbs and resistors? Well, like a transformer, this switch could be electrical state. Excess current to heat, heat to light. A stretch? Sure, but it's an easy way to kind of understand. 
Everything's a switch. Now the LEDs. We don't need ChatGTP for them. Come on, they're LEDs. Current flows into the anode, the positive, usually the longer pin, and out the cathode, the negative, or the shorter pin. The current makes that diode glow, and boom, light. A little simple of an explanation, but eh, what am I, an engineer? Well, now that I have a little time, I'd really like to thank everybody that's been watching. That last video hit almost 3,000 views, and I'm also closing in on 400 subs. Nice. But let's not get complacent. If you're watching this video, and you're liking what I'm doing, how about a sub? Come on, it don't take much. Just a little clicky-click. And if you're feeling really froggy, a like and a what's up in the comments would be cool too. And for those who don't like what I'm doing, well to that I say, hit that dislike button. But if you're gonna do it, at least make yourself heard. Let's know why. Is it my annoyingly nasally voice? Well, I have a polyp. Can't help it. My poor script writing is shit of video quality? I'm sure those will eventually get better, but no promises. Either way, let me know in the comments. This way I can tell you to f*** off. Eh, moving on. The caps are next. They're there to stabilize the voltage, ensuring consistent operation of the IC chips. The chat is also saying the 1UF cap also controls the pulse frequency of the 555 timer. Probably has to do with the drain or charge time of the cap. More on that when we get to the timer itself. And now for the chips themselves. Going in now are the chip sockets. These are not necessarily needed, but they're there so when you burn out the chip from some stupid mistake, like making a solder bridge that shorts the positive to the negative, or putting the chip in backwards, you could just pop the chip out for an easy replace. Well, if you have an extra chip, we'll only wait two days for Amazon to send you 20 for eight bucks. These are cheap AF. Now the small chip is an NE555 timer, and according to the chat, it's configured in a stable mode. It generates a continuous stream of electrical pulses. These pulses act as a clock signal for the 4017 chip. The frequency of the pulses is determined by the combination of the 3.3 mil, 4.7 mil, and 10 million ohm resistors, and the one UF cap. If needed though, I don't think it's necessary for this application, you could slow the pulses with a higher value cap or speed them up with a lower. Nice, I understood that description. Now for the CD4017BE chip, the longer one. This is a decade counter, meaning it counts to 10, zero to nine sequentially, but thanks to the 555 chip, it's doing it super fast. So from looking over the traces, no diagram of course, thanks you Deb. When the counter reaches output six, which is technically seven, a zero is technically one. Yeah, I know. Well, basically it counts zero, one, two, three, four, five. Then when it gets to output six, it makes to the reset pin on the chip itself and starts over. Wow, I kind of understand this circuit. Let's break it down to make sure. Okay, power is supplied, in this case, five volts. Then the power goes to the 555 timer, which is running at a specific clock speed thanks to the combination of the three millions of ohm resistors and the one UF cap. The clock then begins sending a signal to the 4017 chip, which then begins counting rapidly, zero through five, then reset, again and again and again, making it seem like the LEDs are all blinking randomly or in a rolling state. Then you push the momentary switch, I put the switch back in there somewhere. Did you catch it? Of course I sure did. So you press the switch, it drains the cap, and locks in the output of the 4017, displaying the simulated die face. One, two, three, four, five, or six. When you release the switch, the cap recharges. After recharging, which is two seconds give or take, it starts over, waiting for the button to be pressed again, to pause and show the result. So technically, in this circuit, if you nail the timing, you can predict the outcome as the 4070 runs sequentially. Huh. Did I just become an electrical engineer? I kind of think I did. So cool. We just made a simple six-sided die simulator. But here's the problem. What's the voltage supposed to be? Instructions? Nope. So you know what? Let's just start off low, and if needed, raise it. I mean, it's probably five volts, but you never know. And for problem number two, it doesn't effing work. No matter how many times I press the button, it only shows a one, or a three, or another three, it's different visually, 
or a five. That's it. Those four. All the LEDs are lighting up when it's in rolling mode, so it should be working, right? Well, you know what? I guess it's let's fix shit time. Well, unfortunately for you, not so much for me. I forgot to hit record while looking for the problems. But I can tell you what I found. While the timing circuit works fine, during my Batman-like investigation, investigation, I could tell you that it was me. It was all my fault. Maybe I'm going blind in my old age. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Most likely it was the latter, but it could be the former. Or maybe I don't know the difference between latter and former. Either way. So number one, while testing out the board, my no agility having self shorted the chip out. Go me. Luckily I had some extras. Maybe buying that kit for 12 bucks wasn't a bad idea. And I thought they would just sit in the drawer forever. You know, it was probably my subconscious making me do this. This way I wouldn't feel like the chips were going to waste. Yeah, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And number two, I mixed up two of the transistors that control the LEDs. One of them is an SS8550, which is a PNP transistor. They are turned on when the base pin is at a lower voltage than its emitter. And the other three are SS8050s, which are NPNs, which are turned on when the base is at a higher voltage than its emitter. Hey, what are you going to do? Shit happens. On the plus side, now I know the difference between NPNs and PNPs. I mean, I kind of had a feeling. It's in the name after all. NPN, neutral positive neutral. And PNP, positive neutral positive. Simple enough. So now, as you watch me desolder the transistors, mess it up again by doing the exact same thing. I cut it out in the edit, but I'm sure those eagle-eyed folks will notice. I'm going to thank my stupidity because now I understand the circuit even better. So these transistors are not turning on some of the LEDs. Well, they are, but not like I thought. What I originally thought was that while the chip is cycling through the outputs, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, get to 6, reset, start over, blah, blah, blah. Each output was turning on the transistor, which in turn was turning on the LEDs. But in actuality, when output 5 is in a high state, or on, it's actually turning the LEDs off. Those LEDs are always on, unless that output is high, then they're off. It actually makes sense. That's how they're getting four transistors to make six different die faces. It's making patterns with the LEDs. Some of the patterns have the same LEDs in them, so they turn them off for some of the patterns. Now it makes sense to me, but with my poor grasp of the English language, I'm probably not explaining it well enough. But hey, what am I going to do? I'm an HVAC tech slash plumber slash electrician slash car mechanic slash carpenter slash snowplower. I mean, hey, if you got the money, I'll do it. 200 an hour. You laugh. That's cheap in New York City. Oh, and look at that. I didn't even realize it. This thing is now working. Got to run it through, make sure all the faces come up, and that's that. Well, I guess I have to call myself a liar. This thing is not so bad. Well, it is. I guess it was the making of this video that made me like it better. Mainly because now I know a lot more about how these components work together. And hopefully so do you. Thanks, Mr. Chat. As a standalone product, it's still shit. It gets 1.9 shits. The PCB is crap. No battery option, poor instructions. You get it. Typical Yidab product. I'm pretty sure I can make something better. Stay tuned for that video. And with that, I'm out of here. Here's some B-roll. And as always, thanks for watching.